What the hell is up with XRP? That's the question many of you are no doubt asking. Indeed, I sometimes find it hard to believe that XRP had an all-time high of almost $4 in the altcoin bull run. Ah, those were the days. But it's not just that. As some other altcoins appear to have been in recovery, XRP has continued its relatively lackluster performance. Indeed, this year has seen it as one of the worst performing major altcoins. So the question remains, why? My name is Guy, and in this video I'll be trying to answer just that. Also, be sure to watch till the very end if you want my personal take on whether there is light at the end of the blockchain for XRP. Before I get going, some of the boring stuff. Guy is not a financial advisor, sadly. So whatever you do, do not take this as financial advice. It's just an educational resource. Also, if this is your first time joining us, welcome to my community. While you're here, you may want to tap that subscribe button and ping that bell. I release these regularly and it's best to get them while they're hot. Finally, I should disclose that I don't hold any XRP. There was a time I did, but I sold it all in 2017. So I have no dog in this fight. All set then? Bang on. Let's jump in. Before I can cover XRP, I need to give a quick overview of what it is. If you're already fully clued up, then feel free to skip ahead with the timestamps I've provided below. Now, the first and most important thing to understand about XRP is that it is not Ripple. I often see people making the mistake of thinking that both are interchangeable names for the crypto. But they are entirely different things. XRP is an open source cryptocurrency that runs on the XRP ledger. Anyone can build on the XRP ledger and anyone can spin up an XRP node. The main purpose of this ledger is to build an internet of value where money can be sent around the world as quickly as email. Ripple, on the other hand, is a for-profit fintech company that is building enterprise-level tech for financial institutions. Ripple was involved in the development of the XRP ledger and Ripple Inc. is still one of the largest holders of XRP. It's easy to get confused though. Despite how much they want to separate the two, the fortunes of XRP are often intertwined with those of Ripple. Indeed, up until about a year ago, XRP was also called Ripple on a number of exchanges. I won't bore you with too much of the details here, but if you want a complete overview on it, then I encourage you to watch my previous video on it right over here. Moving on though, let's take a look at the price dynamics and tokenomics of XRP, shall we? Now, just like any other asset on the market, price is determined by a number of factors some more speculative and others more fundamental in nature. There is no doubt that the rally that occurred in late 2017 was one driven by speculation, completely devoid of any sort of fundamental explanation. Of course, this was not specific to XRP though. We know of many altcoins that saw similar levels of frenzy. However, what are the fundamental drivers behind XRP? Well, in my view, it is these supply demand factors. Retail investor demand, people like you and me, institutional investor demand, hedge funds and the like, financial institution utility demand, banks, payment processes, remittance, etc., Ripple Inc. sales, and Ripple founder sales. Now those last two are on the supply side and they are important to understand. Yes, XRP has a max supply of 100 billion, but only about 44% of that is currently circulating. The rest of this supply is locked up either in escrow or in the hands of the founders. That means that when more of this supply is unlocked, if demand is not there to meet it, price is likely to fall. Okay, so that should sound pretty clear. Now, in order for me to analyze the price impact, I'm gonna go over each of those factors and explain what impact they're likely having on the XRP dynamics. Let's start with that retail investor demand. There is no doubt that this was one of the largest factors that contributed to the 2017 XRP bonanza. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mates of mine who couldn't register exchange accounts because they were full were dying to buy XRP off me OTC. Some of them I did oblige, 
others I couldn't help. It really was an insane time in the crypto markets. This was no doubt being fed by the round-the-clock news coverage of XRP's ascent. You even had the likes of CNBC giving their viewers a step-by-step -step guide about how to buy XRP. There was also a highly passionate community that was spreading the good word of XRP and decentralized payments. They were one of the most active and engaged of any that I've seen. An XRP army. All of this helped XRP go parabolic. Amazingly so. In late 2017, I was getting nervous and decided to sell the majority of my XRP. I then proceeded to watch with immense regret as it continued its ascent towards $4. Of course, we all know that it never reached that level and, in line with most of the altcoin space, is far away from those levels today. Okay, so why am I telling you this? Well, because I'm trying to illustrate just how much of an impact the retail investor market has had on the price of XRP. So one has to ask themselves if this fervent demand could one day come back. Looking at some research from the likes of eToro, the XRP army has dwindled in number. In the first quarter of 2020, the research found that the number of Twitter users discussing the cryptocurrency has fallen by 16%. There is also data from the Telegram sphere that shows a falling interest in Ripple or XRP-related topics. Here is research that was done on the number of users that have fallen in specific Telegram channels over the past two years. You can see that the Ripple channel has had a fall of almost 64%. Moreover, some high-profile members who either had popular Twitter profiles or who published regular blogs have thrown in the towel. With no generals to lead an army, the rest tends to fall by the wayside. So yes, from a retail investor side, it doesn't look like we have the right ingredients for a rally anytime soon. I could be wrong, but the data does not lie. Anyways, on to our next demand driver, and that is institutional investor demand. Now, when I'm referring to institutional investor demand, I'm talking about those funds that would buy XRP in order to make a profit on price appreciation. Hedge funds, crypto funds, and other types of investment vehicles. So, are they buying XRP? Well, it can sometimes be hard to assess, as not many funds have to publicly disclose their holdings. We all know of Arrington XRP Capital that was started by the TechCrunch founder. This fund was fully denominated in XRP, and was meant to make investments in XRP. However, as was disclosed at an interview in 2018, the fund has more exposure to Bitcoin than it does to XRP. One only has to wonder what that number looks like now, given the price fall. Another institutional investment vehicle that we can look at is Grayscale Investments. They're perhaps best known for their Bitcoin Investment Trust. They launched a number of other funds, including Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and in May of 2018, an XRP fund. So let's compare some of these, shall we? In May of last year on the XRP fund, they had about $4 million in assets under management, and they have just north of 135,000 outstanding shares. Today, there is only $2.6 million under management with just below 160,000 shares. Now, indeed, the fall in AUM was mainly as a result of the fall in price. However, that limited share growth is quite disappointing. Taking a look at the Ethereum fund, here is the AUM at the same time last year, about 7.5 million with 838,000 outstanding shares. Let's take a look at that number now. Over $210 million under management and over 30 million outstanding shares. So it really is quite stark. One wouldn't expect such a discrepancy for a currency that is just behind ETH in terms of market cap rankings. Okay, that may be a fluke. Let's take a look at another crypto investment trust at Grayscale. Here is the Ethereum Classic AUM and shares outstanding in 2019, and here is the number today. Both have grown considerably. Less so than Ethereum, but more than XRP. So quite clearly, institutional investors are not too keen on the XRP Investment Trust at Grayscale. Why is this important, you ask? Well, Grayscale is one of the most well-known crypto investment trust companies in the US. Institutional investors such as hedge funds, pensions, and endowments use trust as a secure and regulated way to get exposure to a particular asset. In the case of their Bitcoin fund, they have over $2 billion under management. So why aren't these institutions so hot for XRP? Well, we can get an idea from the comments that Morgan Creek Digital CEO made in a recent interview. 
Mark Yusko said that coins like XRP and Stellar's XRM are too centralized for his liking and use some interesting analogies with traditional stocks. I've linked to the piece below if you want to read further. Anyways, it's not so likely that we're going to see a rush from institutions to buy up XRP anytime soon. But there is one source of demand that could be more promising than retail and institutional investors, and that is utility demand from financial institutions. The reason that I'm clearly making a distinction here is because these banks, remittance companies and payment providers need XRP as settlement mechanism. They are not buying it specifically for the purposes of price appreciation. And on this front, it appears to be increasing. These clients are mostly those that sign up to use RippleNet, Ripple's global payment network and settlement platform. In total, there have been over 300 financial institutions that have joined RippleNet since the company started rolling out its technology. There are also some pretty high-profile names in that list, which include the likes of Santander, MoneyGram, and American Express. This client list is also constantly growing, with a new one being added every few weeks. It also makes sense from a financial institution's perspective and was one of the reasons that I was bullish on XRP back in the day. Cross-border payments were the bane of my existence, and the solution provided by Ripple was a breath of fresh air. Near instant settlement with close to zero fees. It's this reason that I think that more and more clients are likely to sign up. I don't see that much competition in the space for cross-border remittance, for example. I won't go into all the details and partnerships here, but I encourage you to take a look at the Ripple blog where they give you an in-depth update, also linked to below. Now, these users of RippleNet will need XRP to settle the transactions. However, a lot of them are not buying that XRP on the open market. They are, in fact, buying it straight from Ripple Inc. And this then brings me on to one of the supply forces in the XRP priced equation. For those of you who don't know, Ripple Labs holds a lot of XRP. According to their Q4 2019 report, 49.9 billion XRP is held in an escrow. Also, excluding this escrow, Ripple holds about 13% of the outstanding XRP supply. Every month, 1 billion XRP is unlocked from the escrow and released to Ripple. The escrow was set up to provide, quote, predictability to the XRP supply. Once these XRP are unlocked and in the hands of Ripple, they make a call on what to do with it. Either they can place some of that XRP back into escrow, or they can sell it on the open market. When it comes to these sales, last year was one of Ripple's biggest. In total, they sold about $500 million worth of XRP onto the market. This actually drew criticism from many in the XRP community, as they saw it as Ripple dumping the crypto onto the market. Now, I don't think this is entirely true, as they did place 1 billion XRP back into escrow in Q4 of last year. However, it doesn't cover that $500 million in sales. Then you also have to consider that some of the buyers could sell that XRP on the open markets once they are able to. Okay, so I know what you're wondering. Why is Ripple even selling this XRP? Well, according to the Ripple CEO, XRP sales are a key component of their profitability. It's quite clearly laid out in this piece in the Financial Times. Ripple would be loss-making if it were not for the sale of XRP. Not ideal at all. Let's also not forget that Ripple may have its eyes on an IPO in the not-too-distant future. If that is the case, then being cash flow positive is something that will definitely help to bolster that offering price. So, make of that what you may. Now, there's one more supply factor out there, and that is sale by founders. Well, more specifically, founder sales, as one of the unknown variables here is Jed McCaleb. For those of you who don't know, Jed McCaleb is one of the founders of Ripple who was gifted 9.5 billion XRP. Back in 2013, he left Ripple and went on to found Stellar. However, there were a lot of concerns around what he would do with his massive XRP holdings. In order to get some clarity, Ripple entered into a seven-year agreement with McCaleb to make sure that sales were made in a responsible way. This was disclosed in a post on the Ripple forum back in August of 2014. Since that time, he has been liquidating what he can, subject to the agreement and market conditions. According to this study by WhaleAlert, they were able to track at least 1 billion XRP sales between that time 
and February of this year, so a pretty decent chunk. There's also no certainty as to what will happen once his remaining 8 billion or so XRP is free to be sold. Now, I don't happen to think he would dump it on the market. That would be pointless, as there would be no way that he could find that liquidity over a short period of time. He'll also want to make sure that he's selling it at a steady pace so as to not adversely impact his sale price. It's only logical. But that still means that he could be bringing more XRP onto the market on an ongoing basis. I mean, does he have a real incentive to hold it? He is, after all, working on a competing protocol. Those are the supply and demand factors that could be impacting the price of XRP. To me, it seems that the only real demand is the utility demand that is coming from those financial institutions. And if the supply from Ripple Inc. and one of its founders exceeds this, then it will likely impact on price. That's just my assessment of the situation, though. But there is one more factor that could be black swan for XRP, and that is regulatory in nature. More specifically, will the SEC consider XRP as a security? For those who've been following, they know the potential implications of a security designation. I cover it more in depth in my extended review, but it will basically mean that Ripple sold unregistered securities. If this is the case, the implications for XRP could be severe as it will eliminate XRP's utility as a currency. Up until now, there has been no clarity from the SEC on it, and Ripple is currently fighting a class action lawsuit on the matter. This has been dragging along over the past two years, and it seems as if the plaintiff's case is getting a bit weaker. But they still have a case. Do I think XRP is a security? Probably not. It's demonstrated its utility, and there should be no expectation of profit. However, one cannot deny that until the SEC comes out and settles the matter, the risk still exists. And as long as that risk exists, market participants are likely to take a wait-and-see approach before they pick up some XRP, if they were considering it at all. I've been through a lot, but now it's time for me to give you my personal view on XRP. I was a big fan of XRP, which is why I first bought into it back in late 2016. There is a dire need to shake up the status quo in the financial industry. When money gets across a border slower than a FedEx parcel, you know that something needs to change. And Ripple's technology was, and still is, one of the most promising alternatives. This is clearly evidenced by the number of clients that are running RippleNet and the amount of funds that is already being moved. However, when it comes to XRP itself, I'm not as bullish. There are fundamental market forces, which I've outlined, that are impacting on the demand and supply of XRP. Currently, it seems like supply could be outstripping fundamental demand. I cannot foresee another retail-driven rally in XRP anytime soon. Similarly, institutional investors don't seem to be that keen on holding XRP either. Despite how hard Ripple is trying to make a distinction between Ripple Inc. and XRP, the fortunes of both remain quite entwined. Ripple needs to sell XRP to be profitable, and XRP needs companies using the ledger in order to create that utility demand. So there is truth in the argument that it is quite centralized. And, as we know all too well, centralization is antithetical to the ideas of cryptocurrency. The reason that I got into crypto was precisely because of its censorship-resistant and decentralized qualities. Time will tell if XRP can shake this centralization image. Perhaps Ripple is able to clearly balance supply with a healthy investor and utility demand for XRP. Perhaps the SEC comes out and dismisses the XRP is a security narrative. Perhaps we see XRP reaching that $4 moon again. But in my view, that's not going to happen anytime soon. And that, my friends, is my view on the price of XRP. Now, of course, it is a view, so I need to hear yours. Fair characterization? Any XRP lads want to counter? Hit me up in the comments below. And if this video tickled your fancy, then tick that like button and don't forget to subscribe. I've got another juicy vid just around the corner. Guys, I have to level with you. That was not all that I wanted to share. Basically, time sometimes escapes me and I can't cover everything I would like to. However, this is the prime reason for my weekly newsletter. It's my short and sweet take on the crypto markets and projects making waves. I also look at some news that may have flown under your radar, as well as some juicy coin tips. Now, 
you have an opportunity to join. Simple instructions. Head on over to the description right now. There you'll find a link to the sign up form. Enter your email and submit. Yep, it's really that simple. Don't delay though, my next one is about to go out. I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.